building the future one innovation at a time hello wonderful attendees i'm your host dalvinder kaur from lovely professional university get ready to dive into today's topic that is fireside chat civil engineering before we proceed further allow me to introduce the experts of the day dr anoop bharatwaj assistant professor adc and hod school of civil engineering lovely professional university he holds a be from thapa university a masters from iisc bangalore and a phd from rurki his research focuses on high speed railways grounds improvement and more Dr Bharatwaj has published seven papers in reputed journals and conferences so i would like to introduce our the alumni also in this webinar miss aditi thakur construction associate at adaid belly she started her career as a coast consultant in quality surviving earning three promotions and undergoing a three months training in new york in 2017 with experience in preparing cost estimates training and leading term so now i would like to introduce mr basant kumar pandit achiever 2024 site engineer ai rakha group abu dhabi uae he is currently working as a draftsman for ai rakha group in dubai a position he has held since november 2023 so now i would like to introduce uh, mr manik atri first year student of btech civil engineering he completed his 10th and 12th grades at kendriya vidyalaya jyotipuram after clearing the lpu nest he earned a scholarship to study at lovely professional university so now i would like to introduce the admission nominee also in this webinar dr lovelyn kumar bhagi associate professor in the field of mechanical engineering with over 20 years of teaching experience his vast knowledge and expertise will surely pave the path for attendees offering valuable information and study abroad programs in the field of sciences and now i hand over the thanks to dr anoop bharat bharadwaj and it would be an absolute delight to listen from him over to you dr anoop uh thank you uh thank you uh, ma'am thank you for a uh, wonderful introduction uh on our behalf of school of civil engineering i would like to welcome all the panel members especially uh a mr vasant who i remember very fondly and dearly okay because we have i have because he just uh passed out uh in this session and uh, especially my special thanks to uh mr aditi thakur uh because uh, geeta ma'am specially uh told me that uh, she had uh some prior commitments uh not prior commitments i would say some emergency commitments that she had to but uh, somehow she managed uh, uh some time uh, from her uh, schedule so uh, special thanks uh to aditi for being here and i think uh, uh, manik uh, is having some issues in joining so as soon as he'll join so uh we'll include him also in the session so uh so on a formal note uh, i welcome you all uh, so uh, i'll start with basant so basant uh, how are you basant good sir good nice 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 to hear you. so so how's how's the heat there uh, in dubai because here in india we are having a lot and lot of issues the same like as in india sir temperature is rising day by day yeah and you are working in alrakha group in dubai is one of yeah. the, one of the most uh, famous uh, construction firms in civil engineering so yes, how's sir. how's your experience of being there absolutely fine sir absolutely fine after getting placement in alrakha group some negative thought are there no doubt at all as being a means a recent graduate a student but right. yes after joining here that fear has gone away very very far <laughs> that's what happens when you join your job for the first time all the negative misconceptions that you usually have how you will be outside and how you will manage so like it always helps right okay so aditi hi hi aditi how are you hi sir i'm good thank you i'm doing great okay aditi so so how are you feeling today I'm I'm great, sir. Honestly speaking, all uh, connecting with LPU, 
no matter how am i connecting it it always gives me a pleasure so thank you for having me yeah it's it's really nice to see you here okay uh, so ajiti so uh, as uh, our almost a perfect alumni i would say so i would ask you the most obvious question do you miss college <laughs> hello aditi i think she is uh, having hello basant can you hear me yeah aditi can no. you hear me yes sir now i can hear you sorry it was just the electricity So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, okay, yeah. So like, where are you uh, currently right now? So right now, uh, I work from home. So currently, I am located at my home itself, which is Himachal Pradesh. Okay, I am also from Himachal Pradesh. Great yeah. to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Aditi, so uh, yeah, I was saying like I just want to ask you the firstly the most obvious question: How often and how much you miss the college and the college days? honestly speaking there is no not even a single second when we don't miss our college and like i have in my during my times we were 600 students at that time among that i at least knew 400 people among those 400 people i'm still in contact with 100 of them <laughs> nice so i think we should make you our alumni coordinator because you have a, such an excellent uh, network as well so oh, it's great to know it's great to know that Fine, fine. Yeah, those, those... we always on the calls. We always talk. It's always amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. This college is always amazing. I miss my college days very, very fondly. That is why I think I ended up being a teacher because I love college that much. I just love the environment of uh, being in a college, being around students, okay, and all those. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is my first question. Uh, for you, uh, on a formal grounds. so i would like i like to ask you that uh if you look back uh, in lpu uh, do you remember any uh, specific projects or uh, any uh, course works okay or certain activities that you feel you had the uh, most uh, significant impact on the career uh, trajectory in civil engineering okay before you answer this i would like uh, you to uh, explain uh what your current designation is and what your uh, profile currently entails entails in uh, civil engineering just for our okay. audience sake of course i know what you do how you do and i would understand it uh, most than mm -hmm. any of uh, the audience but still yes uh, definitely so i'll start uh, i'll start with how it started so i got placed from lpu itself in 2015 and mm -hmm. it was an organization based in us so they wanted to start their first office in india and they hired at least five people among those people four uh, four of us and we we are we were good friends in the college we are still good friends we were from the civil background and one was from the mechanical background so the profile actually i entered was a cost consultant which is a core part of quantity surveying so quantity okay. surveying is really an amazing field and i would say for the civil engineers who wants to avoid going outside in the site mm. <laughs> quantity <laughs> surveying is the field especially the pre contract side of the construction which i dealt with throughout my career so i started right. as a cost consultant in the quantity surveying and then recently not recently it has been a year now i little bit switched from that uh, office and currently i am working in a tax firm although it's a tax firm i'm still doing the civil engineering task because uh, i am preparing i'm still preparing the estimates but these estimates are for the building which has already been constructed and then i have to check their uh, like we call it the life of the building then saving the tax so all those things which i had studied uh, in civil yeah. engineering about the life right. expectancies how to make estimate all those things are still utilized getting utilized and then uh, i have i have built my career in this okay okay nice nice it's amazing who taught you uh, cost estimation and quantity surveying let me uh, <laughs> ask you <laughs> honestly speaking quantity surveying wasn't even at that time it wasn't even a subject now it i know it's getting more and more popular and every universities and i know lp even has it uh, yeah. at that time we didn't have quantity surveying but we did have estimation and 
uh, now answering to your question, the course, I would say it was the estimation which actually and really, really affected me. And I think to me, it was taught by ma'am. It was taught by one of our former HODs. Uh, okay. She really, she was really amazing in teaching so many subjects. She had taught us estimation, and in my in my all like it has been nine years I have been working in this industry. The first course, uh, which actually, uh, like from the beginning I have been doing was the estimation. So it was the basic which I have studied pretty well in the college. It was taught to me pretty well in the college, and then I utilized it. Apart from that, like all the constructions. You always require the basic knowledge of structural engineering as right. well as the geotech engineering. Right. These are the two other subjects which totally helped me out. Like, as I told you, I have worked in the pre contract side. So, which mm. means if a building is going to construct in, let's say, 2030, a client will go to the architects right now and architects will contact a consultant company like, our, like us right now. Right, so they'll right. only have a rough idea, but that rough idea will be based on the geotech reports. So it's really very, very important to mm -hmm. know how to read geotech reports. And it's nothing but all those practicals that we have done on the soil test and all those amazing things. And, right. the first thing, and all those structural. I remember that we had been given so many assignments during my time related to the structure, mm -hmm. like designing a beam, designing a column, how to design a full building, all those basic concepts. All those calculations actually helped me throughout this career. Nice, nice. Perfect, perfectly answered. I think you you answered it uh, better than my expectations. So it's a really detailed, detailed uh, analysis. So I would suggest, yeah, so estimation. So previously, I think uh, we used to have uh, PERT and CPM, uh, like uh, that uh, subjects. Under that, you would read the estimation and the costing uh, part. Now it is uh, more distributed because of, the industry inputs that we have. So based on that, and now we have uh, two or three subjects which uh, contribute to the domain that you are uh, currently working on. So I would like to switch uh, to uh, Mr. Basant. Uh, sorry, Basant, for uh, keeping you uh, waiting. Okay, but uh, I'm sure you must be hearing uh, what uh, Aditi was saying that if you want to be on a side, you should focus on quantity surveying and estimation. <laughs> right, right. So I know you have been working as a site engineer and you have been assigned the job of a draft, draftsman. It's more of a designing uh, kind of a thing. So so uh, I'll ask you uh, mostly uh, a similar type of a question. So what do you think or which particular course or which particular area has helped you on site to gain the key skills or the insights that you have gained at LPU, which uh, you think has contributed to your uh, recent success? Sir, I would like, first, I would like to thank LPU, all the faculties member and the teacher of lovely professional university. First of all, after joining here, sir, is uh, a question of starting in my mind from the first semester itself that how our curriculum has been designed. What is the reason behind it? First, we have to uh, 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 a strength of material, a structure analysis one, a structure analysis two. What is the reason behind it? Why not RCC first? Right. After joining here, I have realized that uh, the people I think uh, we just lost uh, uh, the connection with uh, uh, Mr. Basant. Okay, uh, so I think uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, let him join back. So Aditil, uh, Aditi, I'll come back to you uh, again. So uh, uh, in what ways uh, do you think uh, that uh, LPU has uh, fostered a sense of uh, community and uh, collaboration among the students within the civil engineering program and how uh, that has uh, influenced your uh, professional network, which you clearly said that you are in uh, contact with a lot of students. So, so how, how do you think LQ helped uh, in building that a sense of community and collaboration? Honestly speaking, uh, being in LQ is itself 
is a big deal and i'll tell you why because uh, like i i belong to a very small town of himachal right i obviously have studied well here in a very good school and i was having i were having a friends like from different districts of himachal pradesh but at the end i was in a kukum of a himachal right mm, okay. but the moment i stepped outside especially into lpu and i am sure not all the universities have that kind of exposure i just from being an himachali i just entered into a college where i met people not just from all the states of india but from outside of the india and trust me i still have friends from outside of india which i met in lpu nice so that was, that was the first thing being in a college where you are studying with national plus international students and how lpu definitely helped me like from a very beginning they will segregate you into small small groups to do certain assignments or to do mm-hmm. small practicals so the first key is to communicate with those people right not everybody uh, in lpu knows hindi everyone right. the the main key point here was the communication that was to speak in english and which which was also a barrier but lpu again helped in that so the first point was that when we started doing our practicals with a group of different kind of people that was the first right. key that was how we all got collaborated then second the next thing which and obviously four years there was non stop learning but the next mm-hmm. point where i felt like that i was collaborate, uh, collaborating with the people when i did a summer internship and lastly when i did the capstone project so right. capstone project is like it's not like, like that i'll be doing a capstone project just with my classmates no like as i told you when i joined there were 600 people so i chose random people from random states which had very different perspective and we all clubbed together and like we had a capstone related to the uh, strength of the this cube of the concrete, concrete. so we were testing that yeah and it took like 4 to 5 months so working on a single goal so we all divided our task and it was really hell of fun because we used to we had classes we had our other things to do but still we were selecting a chose from different uh, group of people who has different classes different times we all were getting together for the one goal that was first thing of, it was really a challenging to you know can connect everyone with the same time then focusing on our task okay this time test has been failed what next second cube test has been failed what next all mm-hmm. those hit and trial methods it helped us in growing like our perspective in the regards of civil engineering and also like when you will go outside as prasant was saying he'll meet new people right nice. reading new people dealing with new people that was a different kind of a thing which i learned in the capstone so i think in right. the civil engineering all these things which has already been assigned and the last thing is which is i am grateful for the lpu is the soft skill classes <laughs> right those classes teaching how to present yourself how to give a presentation how to communicate what are the things you need to uh, keep in mind when you are giving interview when you are taking interviews how to dress up how to do your hair everything it has already been helped us and all those right. people who were there with me in the soft skills classes i as i told you most of them started the organization with me <laughs> other mm. which went apart we still have a call so that's how we all collaborated and lpu was the key actually how it all happened so right. thank you lpu right. for this <laughs> yeah L- lpu is also uh, really appreciative that uh, you uh, hold uh, these details so high and dearly to yourself because yeah we do uh, uh currently we have a very first year students second year students they end up uh, questioning sir why are we studying about how to dress up how to walk and how should we you see we should be even in our college we had uh, soft skill classes where they they tell you how to present how to you know behave in a particular manner especially in interview so because like we have to focus on overall development of a student not just on uh, academic front okay we exactly. we are yeah we have to you know we have to focus on a holistic development of uh, uh, the students okay so uh, i think uh, basant has joined uh, basant can you hear me uh, 
uh, basant you need to unmute yourself i think i can see he has uh, joined yes sir yeah yeah basant yes, yeah. yeah what happened <laughs> Sir, suddenly my system got stuck. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so uh, so uh, we were uh, so you were telling uh, like what were the key skills or the insight that you gained at LQ and how it was uh, helping you in achieving the success that you have as a recent graduate. When the word comes a skill, it yes. compromises both technical as well as non-technical. For grabbing those technical skills such as AutoCAD, STAT Pro, and uh, as Aditi Ma'am explained about quantity survey and estimation for those mm. various kind of software are there, as we know, Microsoft, so all are. So achieving this all uh, software learning process, we must should have some non-technical skills such as adaptability, uh, feasible, punctuality, whole enthusiasm, so right. these are those skills which I grab, grab from lovely professional university and which discussion was also going on right now. You said the first year and second year a student start asking the question why we are studying PELS, why we are yeah. studying PELS. What, what is the benefit of these courses? We are just wasting the time. No, mm. absolutely not. This is yes. this because... plays very plays a role in professional life. Right, because in a longer run, these are the things that will contribute to your uh, personality and overall your development. So, uh, Basant, yeah. So, Basant, uh, uh, let me ask you another question. That uh, you have studied uh, so many subjects in civil engineering. In civil engineering, you study around forty to fifty uh, uh, subjects, where thirty, thirty-five subjects are technical subjects, and then uh, some non-technical subjects also. So uh, how do you plan to use uh, the education that you have received from LPU, like you were mentioning about the softwares like SAD Pro, AutoCAD, or these uh, some uh, skills that you have gained, how you are planning to use that education and uh, the experience from LPU so that you can have a meaningful impact in the field of uh, civil engineering? Yes, sir. As I was discussing about the designing of course in civil engineering, especially in civil engineering by the you know faculties member and higher authorities of the school of civil engineering and all. The course has been designed in such a way so that you can not reside in one leap on designation that I have to do this, I have to be a, a structural engineer. So the course has been designed in such a way you can grab as many as or anywhere you can. Right, right, right. So can you share uh, any uh, specific moment, Basant, or uh, any project like Aditi mentioned, uh, she remember uh, her capstone project very vividly, uh, like during your time at LPU, where you feel uh, that has uh, boosted your growth and development as a civil engineer? Can you share any moment or particular time or particular semester? Ke, oh, at that particular time, oh, uh, I actually grow, I growed as a civil engineer, which you know amplified your uh, growth. Ke, okay, now, ha, now I know that I know something about civil engineering. You get that confidence once you, uh, you know, probably I think, Absolutely. yeah, you get it after second, third year usually when you read most of your. Uh, poor subjects. Yes, because I will explain after third year because we are, <laughs> we can say, sir, we are very, uh, means uh, unlucky that we have joined in third year offline classes. First two uh -huh. years we have a study online. Right. So in first semester, in the very first semester earlier, uh, starting of the first, uh, fifth semester, so third year, fifth semester, I have done a project of quantity survey and I have found the bill of that is BOQ, BO law of quantity of 56 block that, that is a school of civil engineering and 57 block that is a school of agriculture, uh, in uh, a school of agriculture. I have handed the detailed bill of quantity that how much amount of cement 
and all the building material has been required to construct this building. Apart from this, as far as project is concerned, I have also funded the defects, which is very important, sir. defects in those buildings, buildings 56 and building uh, 57, as well as building 55 as well, a school of mechanical engineering. So these are the projects. And the specific moment with regardless of the project is uh, LPU is known for it that you uh, should have some extracurricular activities such as One World in which I have participated, One India yeah. which has recently conducted in LPU. So these yeah. are the very, very key factors. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, uh, coming back to you, uh, Aditi, uh, uh, let me ask you like uh, as uh, you have uh, progressed throughout your career, so how have you continued to stay uh, connected with LPU and contribute to the uh, growth of uh, or have you ever uh, connected with the current students of uh, civil engineering? Uh, actually, yes. So not very recently, but I think two years ago. Hmm. Yeah, it, it has to be around two years ago. So I conducted, I mean, like LPU asked me, obviously, so LPU asked me to conduct a online webinar just to give the students a vision. What are the different opportunities they can grab in future or what are the things which are going to, you know, ex they, they can expand their knowledge or they can grab or where they can have a very good opportunities. So I, it was, it was around 80 to 90 students and okay. I spoke to around, I think 60 minutes, I remember. So that was the one time when I actually connected with the students of uh, LPU, which were pursuing civil and most few of them, I think they, they even, sent me their request on LinkedIn, you know, just to know how it is going or how can I help them. So that was the one thing. And apart from them, I honestly speaking, like you can leave LPU, but LPU cannot leave you. Yeah, yeah. Like we have a saying that we have this saying going around <laughs> for quite some years. It's very difficult uh, to get LPU out of you. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's really, really true. Like other day when Geeta ma'am asked me what was my registration number, it was on my tips. I didn't have to go back and check. It was it had uh, that much impact. So uh, I have been connected uh, with LPU. The reason being, as I told you, when I started my career, it was like for the organization which has their first India office. Mm -hmm. And after that, we came back to LPU. We recruited some other people. So since that, we have been recruiting people in my previous organization. And I just left, as I told you, I only left that like a year ago. And okay. then uh, like four to five years ago, I was the one who was actually conducting the exam within the LPU students for the civil engineering to recruit them. And I was okay. interviewing them. So I have seen all different type of the uh, student candidates yeah. and I have interviewed them and recruited them. There were so many people who have been recruit, uh, recruited through me. And I, after they joined the, uh, my organization, I trained them and it has been going like that since then. So I have been in contact with LPU, I think. It, that's why I'm saying it has never left me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. We do need alumni and we do need a feedback. So I think it's uh, a news for me that you have also came to uh, the university for uh, recruitment purposes also. So uh, like, so so as, as a recruiter, what do you think... Uh, so I thought we were talking to alumni, but you are also a recruiter for uh, our school of civil engineering. So I have to change the focus of my conversation a little bit, just for my own personal uh, input. Uh, that yeah. uh, as a recruiter, what do you think uh, that uh, uh, students of a civil engineering or as a school of civil engineering, what we should focus on for uh, for future, basically, if they have to get placed in a better companies honestly like what, speaking, what is your overall experience yeah honestly speaking lpu has already done a wonderful job because like we mm -hmm. we kind of impressed our uh, managing director and he asked us to you know go again to lpu and he was okay. always has been impressed by the people we have hired so far so i mm -hmm. believe lpu is civil engineering department especially is already doing great I don't think so. And like, obviously, there are always chances to learn. But as you uh, already told me that you have started, you know, you have 
increase the scope of the subjects like quantity surveying is a subject now which is yes, a great yes. thing because it was needed uh it was right. needed and it is the future of the civil engineering but apart from that uh, i don't know whether it's already there or not but i would say if you have started uh, i know there are so many software which we teach like autocad stand pro but apart from that we can give students a little bit uh idea about the bim building information management BIM. yes because, we have yeah. started bim now they are that's, studying bim in two that's terms awesome. that's yes, awesome yes. because i'm not aware of that because that is the really really focused area right now in the industry apart from that if uh, if we can uh, teach them about the ai like how ai yes. and civil engineering and how ai and construction what are their benefits what are their draw, uh, drawbacks how can a candidate can outstand if everyone is you know if everyone is learning ai how can they can be different so there are these kind of opportunities which are coming apart from that i would say 3d printing and Yes, Aditi, we have started introduction to AI, ML, awesome. uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and we also yes. have a subject on 3D printing as well. And sustainability, the renewable uh, energy sources, they should be taught as a separate, separate subject. Because when yes. I studied, I remember I studied it like uh, under the environmental engineering, but then, right. you know, I keep myself operated, so I like when you are in the industry you keep going and enroll yourself into the different different webinar seminar you know right right so i kind of enrolled myself in those kind of a things so i it, it came to my attention okay oh, this is the future this is what we are looking for because in future we all will be needing this green engineering you know making green yes. roofs green walls and or making our planet beautiful and green so i think these are the future of civil engineering anyway civil en as a civil engineer and in the field itself and these are the subjects it helped you have that I told you. If you guys has already started it. That's really amazing. Yeah, so we have, yeah, we have started and it's been, I think, uh, uh, three years already running. And uh, I think uh, Basant uh, can uh, share, share that. I think probably uh, Basant has gone through the same uh, program scheme that I'm talking about, uh, where we have introduced these subjects. So Basant, can you share uh, uh, your uh, experience on uh, the subjects that we are talking about or uh, have you gone through that scheme or this these uh, scheme got implemented after you left uh, no sir in three as far as you uh, talked about 3d printing it was in yes. eighth semester it has been recently okay. completed by the uh, a student who was in um, lpu campus itself but i was still okay. here so 3d achha, printing achha. was there machine right. learning was not introduced in my term Right now, okay, I okay. Don't know. okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. We 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 have introduced. Now I think uh, we have uh, increased okay. the input That's because good. civil engineering you need to have IT input also. Okay, so and yeah. one Aditi ma'am is talked about AI, sir. Very very important. Yes, yes, AI yes. artificial intelligence. So so it's it's a common subject and we name it as uh, introduction to artificial intelligence and machine learning in civil engineering. So that is how we are running uh, that subject. So, yeah. So, uh, Basant, uh, let me uh, ask you uh, another uh, question. So what role uh, do you believe uh, that uh, your ongoing learning and professional development uh, will play in your career advancement after graduating from uh, LPU? Like whatever you have learned in LPU, how, how do you think uh, it is going to uh, help you in uh, professional development first. I think that you answered uh, previously. But in a career advancement, like how you are going to uh, advance in your career? Because I'm sure you don't like you want to progress uh, in your career, right? So how do you think that whatever you have gained uh, from uh, LPU, how how do you think that can advance your career? And how the course scheme or the courses that you have studied, how they are complementing or will be contributing to your advancement? Okay. Mm. Sir, as I have uh, talked earlier about uh, that uh, the course has been designed by LPU was really fantastic. But yes, at the certain point of time, some changes should be there. As I have discussed with the concern authorities that I we are discussed about uh, with HOS at that time was I one was 
uh, when I was in six semesters uh, that foundation engineering that is geotechnical that should be compulsory. It should not right. be elective. Yes, yes, yes. So that we we have implemented. Same, yeah, we have already implemented that change. Oh, that's great, sir. That's great. Yes, that's yes, really yes, great. Because I am realizing that these are the very very key factor in um, further success in civil engineering, especially. Right, right, right. So we have uh, introduced. So uh, previously, uh, there was uh, uh, a discussion where. Uh, uh, due to certain changes in the scheme and due to uh, industry input okay there was and, uh, and one more and one more thing is sir that is revit software yes. it should be in btex i think it is in mtech but it should be in btex sir it should no, be yeah that is there but see uh, in uh, btech only a student has a certain understanding so revit uh, mostly uh, we have uh, a workshop mode uh, started where students can go for a workshop and uh, they can do that uh, workshop. It because is possible. These by... are the bunch of software, sir, whose demand is in peak in the market, in current scenario of the market. These are right, the bunch right. of the software. Yeah. That, that, is, that, is, that is for sure, Basant. I totally, totally agree uh, with you. So, uh, Basant, let me ask you uh, uh, a final question. So, how do you uh, plan to uh, give back to LQ and support uh, future generation of civil engineering as alumni? In a simple statement, I will say, sir, LQ has really given me, given me personally many things. I will be always in contact with LQ. Apart from this, I will say that in LinkedIn itself, I have uh, more than 10 students in, I am talking about my junior, not about my right, senior right. or my classmate. I am talking about my junior who is still pursuing his first year or second year or might be is in third year. Mm. So I am in contact with them. Uh, Sometimes they are asking the question that how right. we can how do we can this. Do so, so you I have, am, so I think you have taken up uh, an yeah, unofficial yeah, role of uh, uh, mentoring uh, students because I know we are living in a world of uh, social media and students the moment you contact with any student immediately they'll find you uh, on linkedin or uh, on instagram or facebook so uh, yes, i think that the younger generation they are more curious about being on social media and you know very knowledge uh, craving people right so 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 yeah. some of so the think... example are there sir that you are talking uh, about <laughs> yes yeah. yes yes <laughs> so, so that is that is uh, there. So, uh, okay. So, Aditi, I'll ask. I'll also ask you a final question because uh, uh, we uh, have uh, our limited time. So, can you uh, share uh, any? Uh, okay. So, it's a two-part question. So, can you share me uh, what is the biggest opportunity uh, that uh, we have as a civil engineering in the industry? In coming years, that's part A, and uh, part B would be, so uh, part B I'll ask later. So first, yeah. So what do you think will be the biggest uh, opportunity uh, for civil engineers in future? Uh, because we know that demand of civil engineering is rising. Definitely, you already said it well, sir. Actually, this we live in a very developing. Uh, yeah, am I audible now? Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. It's just that the weather here just changed. It's like full of storms. So electricity is just winding out. It's just power. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, I'm really sorry it's, for that. Nah, it's fine. It's yeah common problem. So it's, it can happen anywhere. Yeah. So as I was telling that we have, actually in India, we have a benefit that we are still a developing country, which means construction is still going to be like it's going to be there all around and being right. a civil engineer as we all know and i'll talk about from the vast to the detail so as a civil engineer we all know we have numerous opportunity one can 
think that I should be only do something related to structural engineering, which will, you know, which will be designing or constructing two phases again. Some someone can decide, okay, I'll offer geotechnical engineering, which will again, there are so many things even under geotechnical reports. Uh, like just our right. report, there are so many things, different type of inspections, different type of audits, different type of construction, which are uh, construct during construction, you require different type of soil engineers, geotech engineers, right? That is a different thing. Then we can, someone can offer, you know, roadways, someone can offer railways, someone can offer bridge construction, someone can offer marine construction. So these are the vast fields which I'm telling you. And we have, at, given the fact that a person has an exposure in the LPU. And as you just told me, how you are preparing a student, honestly speaking, they all have a very good opportunity. And apart from that, if I just talk about the quantity surveying, because I have expertise in that, to be yeah, honest. And a quantity surveying, and even Basant is pursuing, if I'm not wrong, even he's, uh, he's also pursuing the quantity surveying, maybe in the construction phase or the post phase. Basant, if I'm not wrong, uh, did you get a chance to meet with Ankit Garg? Because he was my batchmate and he got, uh, he joined Alaraka at that time and I joined this organization back then. So coming to the point, quantity surveying is itself is a very big, big, vast field. And it has, you won't believe it, like in Delhi and Sia with, with the hub of uh, civil in industries, there is a scarcity of people right now. Right. Especially the quantity survey people. Reason being, in the COVID, there were so many things were going on in the COVID. So people mm -hmm. has somehow changed their fields from civil engineering to other. other so right sorry. now, those industries aren't even able to find a quantity surveyor. So mm -hmm. it is a very good field right now. In the quantity surveying, as I told you, it has been, it's divided into three parts. Pre-contract, that's a totally different. Construction phase, that's a totally different. And then post construction phase which is a totally right. different mm -hmm. and if you are a quantity surveyor you can work for a client side you can work for a contractor side you can work for a consultant side so you can see these are different different firms apart from right. this we have pmcs right we have these project management fields which has again a totally different scenario and even people are so much required over there this project management field it, it needs a person who is very good at that the subject you just told me earlier, so PERT, CPM, using that primer vera because it requires how mm -hmm. you are scheduling your projects, right. how you are saving, uh, how you are dealing with the money, how you want to save, how much you want to save, all those kind of a things. So being a civil engineer, I really think that it, anyone who is a civil engineer actually has a very, very good scope because people somehow had shifted towards their uh, CSE sites they think that mm -hmm. they have a very good money over there. I'm not saying, I'm not denying the fact it's not the fact. But once you have a good experience uh, being a civil engineer, trust me, you can earn as much as they are earning right now. It just depends how much caliber you have, how much ability you have, how you are showcasing it. It's just a matter of a time. Right. So, I really believe that uh, anyone who is pursuing civil engineering has a very good opportunity in the coming yeah. years. Well, it is beautifully, beautifully depicted that uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of, lot of scope. We have a tie up program with LNT also. So, where uh, the employees of LNT they come to School of Civil Engineering and uh, they are currently enrolled in a uh, graduate, graduate program. So, it's they are diploma employers. So, when I interact with them, uh, so I talk to them like, uh, what's the demand of the market, like how much it is and how things are going. So they always say, sir, like there's a lot of demand in this uh, in the in the industry, and uh, they have also told me that uh, if you need anyone uh, to place your students, so you just call us up because we can get them placed. Because there is a lot of lot of growing demand uh, of civil engineering because people they just got shifted to uh, CS and yeah. IT post COVID period, but and they forgot yeah. like still there are many many fields and obviously in civil engineering uh like you earn money with experience right so Definitely. that is there. yes okay so that was the opportunity and uh, the part b of that question was uh what do you think uh is the biggest problem or a threat uh for a civil engineering 
in a future that we should be aware of or that we should need to address or we should need to uh, take care of. Honestly speaking, you have already mentioned that you have already took care of everything. I don't know what else I can, what I, I, else I can add on. But as I told you that I keep attending few webinars, seminar, and most of the time I hear one thing, which is like everyone, every, every country, every state wants to construct these sustainable buildings or sustainable okay. infrastructure, I would say. Right. So, you know, getting that, uh, getting that awareness, going through the studies, what are sustainable building, what are sustainable infrastructures, what we can add, how we can add, because that's the future for sure. And that's mm -hmm. the challenge right now, because like LPU or many other universities, which has already been built. And I know LPU keeps on growing. It keeps on adding like people uh, like in my time, I remember there were so many people of my batchmates or just a senior to us you know they had their uh, they did their summer internship within the LPU when they were some buildings were getting constructed mm -hmm. so LPU right. itself I know it, it's keep growing and it's uh, I'm sure it has so many like in the auditorium there was those green planters so LPU has already started building that but there right. are so many smart cities big cities which has it's just a concrete jungle and now everyone is thinking how we can convert this concrete jungle into green jungle green. right right so that is the main uh impact uh, which is going to be there in the future we okay. need to start thinking uh mm. for that in that particular think, direction yeah that's a particular area because that was the one thing and it also related to uh, that's a different subject but it somehow correlated the waste management thing that is right. the another subject area because we still see that you know rivers are rivers are not getting cleaned properly or we are still throwing our all those garbage just outside. So that is actually a subject, and there are so many PhD scholars they have they are getting together just to think, coming up with a plan how to do that. So that is the another field which is a challenge right now. It's going to stay a challenge for next couple of years, but after that it's gonna settle. So that is a challenge for a civil engineer. And we can turn this challenge into opportunity, honestly speaking. Sure, sure, sure. But do you want to add uh, something to it? Uh, sir, uh, I have to ask a question from Aditman. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> man, which software you are using, man? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well asked question, Basan. Uh, if I'm not wrong, UA is currently... Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. UA is using... Most of the UA is using Costex. And even uh, I was using Costex. Currently, I'm using on-screen takeoff, which is mostly is used in US. It's not that popular in the east side or the Middle East part. But Costex is the main software which... I'm sure you are aware of, you are already using it. And if you are not using it, then you should. Because in UAE, in Dubai, there are so many companies. I'm telling you this because so many you Middle East companies has, has contacted me to teach them uh, this software. Or if I know software, they want me to, you know, kind of do a freelancing job for them. That how can, because this is a software which is getting popular in India now, but was popular in uh, UAE. So Costex is the answer and right now on screen takeoff. These are the two softwares. I was just waiting that Costex you will have. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay. 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 So uh, I think uh, we had a very, very interactive uh, chat. Uh, especially uh, my uh, thanks. It goes to uh, Aditi. Thank you. Thank you for uh, wonderfully uh, interacting uh, with us and our audience and uh, taking out uh, time from your uh, busy uh, and scheduling day and the same thanks it goes to Basant uh, thank you thank you uh, so much it was uh, a brilliant uh, interaction with you you gave insight to uh, the current uh, scenario also as well as uh, the future scenarios also so I'm really really thankful for you guys and uh, I would love to meet you guys uh, in person so hopefully uh, we'll have uh, soon we'll have some uh, interaction or some plan where we can call off 
uh, all the alumni from uh, previous classes. So thank you uh, on the mm -hmm. behalf of uh, civil engineering. Thank you, uh, uh, Aditi. Thank you, uh, Basan. Uh, you. Over to you, uh, Davinder, ma'am. So much. Thank you so much once again, Dr. Anoop, Ms. Aditi and Mr. Basan. So it was wonderful watching you talking on civil engineering in depth. And now I would request to the admission nominee, Dr. Lavleen Kumar Bhagi to be on the screen. Over to you, Mr. Uh, Dr. Lavleen. Unmute yourself, Dr. Lovelyne. Oh, yeah. Very good afternoon, ma'am. Am, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. You can continue. Right, ma'am. Very enlightened discussion I have heard, uh, Dr. Noob, sir. Uh, hello, hello, Lovelyne, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, am I audible, Anup, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Clear okay, and loud right, and right. clear. Right, right, right. And regarding the bit, uh, this uh, civil engineering department we have in uh, LPU, we have total uh, nine uh, different programs uh, in, in LPU, like from diploma, we have two uh, different uh, disciplines in diploma, like one is diploma regular, another one is diploma lateral, then we have uh, BTEC programs, and then after BTEC civil engineering, we have MTEC programs also. Further, for after, after MTEC, we have PhDs also. So if I combine, uh, in, in terms of number, I can say the, the total nine programs we have. And along with this, one, one is BTEC uh, construction technology. That is a lateral entry program. And it's, it is specially offered to the LNT diploma holders only. Uh, so we, we have very, very you can say, uh, very, uh, good, uh, you can say, uh, number of students in this uh, program, LNT uh, program. And furthermore, based upon the, the in the diploma, this is basically after 10th uh, student can go for the diploma program. And in the diploma, there is a no, no test is there. Only we, we require 10th uh, marks. And for BTEC, we have the eligibility criteria is basically student has to qualify LPU NEST. We have uh, our own test. The name is LPU NEST or CUET. Either qualify LPU NEST or CUET. And students should have done uh, you can say 12th uh, class with the physics, chemistry, mathematics, and English. These uh, should have studied in that 12th and uh, should have minimum 60% marks. After qualify, after uh, meet these eligibility criteria, then only student is eligible for BTEC program, uh, BTEC civil engineering, we can say. And another program we have in BTEC, we, uh, that is 2 plus 2 international credit transfer. Uh, in this uh, 2 plus 2 international credit transfer means uh, two years at LPU, two years at abroad universities, and then uh, at the end, student get, will get the degree from the foreign university. And uh, total duration of the program will be four years. Uh, furthermore, I want to share my screen and show you how you can uh, check the details of any particular program uh, on our website. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, first, I'll show you the rankings and placement. I hope screen is visible. Yes, screen is visible. You can continue, Doctor. Right, ma'am. Right. Okay, very first is uh, we have uh, a NAC grade that is A++ uh, with score of 3.68 on the four point scale, NAC A++ A++ accreditation we have. And it is the highest score in first cycle of accreditation among all government and private universities. And in the, in the NAC, the assessment is basically depend upon four criteria like curricular aspect, teaching, learning, research, innovation, and experience tensions, infrastructure and learning, student support and progression, uh, then governance, leadership and management, and then institutional value and practices. So these are the four criteria on which uh, NAC generally grades any institute or university. Uh, further, if you go to the this NBA, uh, BTEC civil engineering program, 
is accredited by NBA also. And we can say over here, you can see uh, this the BTEC civil engineering is under accredited and it is uh, being accredited for academic year 2024-25, 2025-26 and up to this uh, 27. So this way accreditation is being there. Another accreditation we have in the uh, in the school of management that is ACPSP and this is uh, accreditation is basically from USA and another approvals we have like UGC approval we have and our distance education programs also uh, been approval by UGC and then we have NCTE approval also and this NCT approval is for basically for education programs like B Ed, uh, M Ed programs, BSc, B Ed, like this uh, education programs we have. Uh, then other approvals we have like PCI, that is Pharmacy Council of India. This uh, approval is uh, uh, generally uh, required for pharmacy programs like uh, uh, you can say Bachelor of uh, Pharmacy. Uh, then we have Council of Architecture approval, that is COA, Bar Council of India. All India Council for Technical Education and then ITPI, ITPI and then Indian Association of Physiotherapists and then Punjab State Council for Agriculture Education. So these are the approvals we have. And memberships we have Association of Indian Universities, International Association of Universities and Institute of International Education. And if I go to the placement over here, the you can see the our student got the package of three crore rupees and in Germany and uh, the name of a student is Yashir M and then we have uh, another students got the package of 54.75 lakh rupees per annum uh, in BTEC CSE, BTEC CSE honors, uh, the various companies Palo Alto, Google, Amazon uh, like this uh, 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 these are the companies we have so so this is all about the <clears throat> the the, uh, the students placed uh, in various companies. And if I talk about the uh, the how you are going to explore our website, uh, I think website website is visible or not? Mm -hmm. Adaksha, website is visible. No, sir, no. no, okay. No, sir, website is not visible. You are talking right, about right. Please share again. <clears throat> Yes, now visible, you can continue. Right, ma'am. Oh, okay. Okay, right now. So when you are going to search, uh, if you are in, want to see the details of the program you are interested in, then first type lpu.in, then further go to the admissions and under the admission tab, the various, uh, you can say, uh, subheadings are there like uh, get started overview, why LPU scholarships, study grant, education loan assistance, residential facilities, uh, then transportation. Like these are the the, the things you can uh, check it out over here. And for the particular program, go to the after twelfth undergraduate program. I'm going to take the example for BTEC civil engineering. Then go to the regular programs. And over here the filter will open and then you can apply the filter like your previous qualification and then the interested program. Like over here, qualification, previous qualification, suppose 12th class, then discipline, we have to select the discipline and it is engineering. Under the engineering, uh, we go to the program civil engineering. And under the civil engineering, we have the BTEC civil engineering and BTEC 2 plus 2 international credit transfer civil engineering. If I want to check it out the details for BTEC civil engineering, then, then you just click over there and you can see the details from the eligibility to the program fee and how you are going to get admission in BTEC civil engineering in LPU. So over here you can see the BTEC civil engineering is NBA accredited program and the eligibility criteria it is to be you should have minimum 60% aggregate marks in 12th class. 
with physics mathematics chemistry and english that means physics mathematics chemistry and english these four subjects sh you should have studied in your 12th class and should have passed in your 12th class and overall marks should be uh, equal to or more than 60% marks or uh, and further uh, either you qualify alpinist or you qualify cuat or you qualify jwe mains okay so uh, any of these three tests uh, you can qualify and you you will be elig eligible for btec csc program uh, sorry btec uh, civil engineering program and furthermore if you want to see what what is the curriculum for btec civil engineering students in our university then you can also check from here that in the first semester the student is going to study these subjects in the first semester and th these are the subjects student is going to study in the second semester and similar way second year third year and similar way final year you can check all the subjects along with the the these uh, subjects student can explore more on what are the engineering minors that is the specialization you can see you can say that is the engineering approaches to environment and water technologies or smart and sustainable infrastructure or construction 4.0 so these are the engineering minors we are offering for the language electives we have so, so it depends upon the the your interest you can go with this pathway electives that means if, if you are interested to go to the corporate job then accordingly you can you you had you are going to study these subjects if you are interested to go to the government jobs then these are the subject you are going to study if you are select higher studies then accordingly the list of the subject is there and further open open minors we have open minors also suppose any candidate or any student wants to uh, pursue btech civil engineering and also uh, want to continue his hobby then this this is the very uh, you can say uh, innovative idea to get get to pursue your hobby also like if you are uh, just i i show you over here suppose you you are preparing for upsc exam then you, along with the BTEC civil engineering, you can opt the history subject uh, or you can study the history subject like the operations we have, mathematics for programming. So these are the open minors. So that means other another discipline subject you, you can easily study along with your BTEC civil, civil engineering uh, study. So this, this is the, you can say, uh, program fee and sco applicable scholarships. Uh, like we have different type of uh, uh, categories, category one, two, and three. Category one basically means uh, either you got 95% or more in your 12th class, or you got JWE percentile equal to or more than 95 percentile, or you got uh, category one in Alpinist exam. So by this, you, you will get the scholarship benefit of 45%. And with 45% scholarship benefit, the applicable program fee will be 77,000 rupees per semester. And if you got next category of scholarship, then 40% scholarship you, you will be applicable is there. And then applicable uh, program fees will be 84,000 rupees per semester. And for third, uh, you can say scholarship category, uh, 35% and the applicable program fees will be 91,000 rupees per semester. Overall fees, if I talk about without scholarship, it will be 140,000 rupees per semester. And the, the criteria is to first go to the first go to our website. Like uh, if you go to the website, admit, admit dot LPU dot in, you just open this website. And over there, you, you have to register. You have to register first with your email ID, with the mobile number, and with the uh, with the, this, uh, you can say password, all the things in which discipline you are interested in, then you have to click register now. And after going to register now, then our dashboard will open where you can apply for the Alpinist exam. And after applying the Alpinist exam, you had to you have to book the slot and then on on the day you are going to book the slot you have to appear our alpinist exam is being conducted in two modes either if you are interested in the remotely proctor exam then you can th give this exam from your home if you have all the infrastructure available with you and if it is not been available or you want to give the exam from the test center then then it's up to you you can choose test center mode exam over there and after qualifying exam then 
you can uh, you can have the, the, the you can go with the admission but now one, one thing we have added over here is that if you are interested in btech civil engineering and you have not given uh, this uh, lpns exam no issue first you book your seat and later you can give the exam and you have to qualify the lpns exam means you have to qualify the eligibility so this way you can uh, proceed with btech civil engineering uh, this uh, uh, discipline and th these are the schedules for the important dates like over here the last date of admission is 15th of june uh, with this scholarship the scholarship i have shown you over here with this scholarship the last date is 15th of june so you need to book your seat on or before this uh, date of entrance exam this is for the if you want to give the exam in this schedule then it will be from 5th of june to 15th of june any any slot you can book if it is available and then your it is uh, exam result will declare within you can say uh, three days and after that within uh, then your uh, result will declare within 48 hours then after the uh, result declaration within three working days you have to book your seat and the last date is uh, 15th of june and furthermore you can see over here both mode of exam is available and you can check it out the guidelines for the remotely proctor exam over here so this is how you can uh, see the detail of particular program like BTEC civil engineering. And if you want to know more about the school of uh, civil engineering, then you have to click over here, uh, civil engineering, then the detail of the school will open. And from there, you can see what, what are the uh, uh, school vision over here? What is the mission of the school is there? Uh, what are the uh, achievements of the school? What are the happenings in the school? So all the relevant detail of the school, you can uh, go through from this page. Like over here, the mission we have, the mission of the school, like placements, detail, what are the highest salary package, what are the average salary package, what are the, uh, how many offer letters our students got. And these are the students uh, placed in various uh, renowned companies and these are the alumni we have, so the, then we have accreditations. So from here, you can see the, the detail of the school. Like after 12th, we have these programs, BTEC Civil Engineering and BTEC Civil 2 plus 2 International Credit Transfer Program. After graduation, so these two MTech master's level program we have, uh, one is structural engineering, another one is constructional engineering. After post-graduation, PhD civil engineering we also have. After diploma, later entry program we have that is BTEC civil engineering. And after 10th, I have already been told you that is diploma in civil engineering we have. So, so from here you can see the various details. Uh, what is the school research, uh, publications, patents uh, in the civil engineering department. So all the uh, relevant details you can get from this uh, website. Right, right. So, so from uh, my side, it's uh, it's this. Uh, if you have any query, I'm glad to give the answer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Lavleen sir, for giving a detailed uh, Thanks, walk away how to uh, browse uh, specific programs and uh, how to uh, go about and visit uh, the website uh, for especially for a school of civil engineering. It was a it was a great insight. Uh, thank you, thank you uh, so much, sir. And uh, I think, uh, uh, Delvinder, ma'am, uh, over to you. Uh, Thank, you for, so much. Uh, just... Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lovelyn, Dr. Anoop, uh, Mr. Basant, and uh, Ms. Aditi. As we come to the end of this webinar, I want to express my deepest gratitude to our experts for sharing their valuable insights and expertise with us. Your presence, enthusiasm, and active participation have made this experience truly special. Hopefully the attenders found this webinar to be valuable and will be able to utilize the information for better decision making regarding your, regarding your admission. If anyone wants to assess this webinar again, they can visit our website that is lpu.in or can be assessed on YouTube also. Stay connected with us for future webinars until we meet again. With the permission of my seniors, I would be signing off this webinar. Take care and goodbye. Have a beautiful day.